Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we're going to continue our discussion on volumes of three-dimensional solids by looking at volumes of pyramids and cones. Let's begin by looking at the volume of a pyramid. You'll find that the volume formula for a pyramid uh, and that of a cone as well is very similar to what we did in the previous video with prisms and cylinders. What you're going to need to know is the base area and also the height, which is the same two values that we need to know with prism. When you look at a prism and a pyramid, you can see that there's some similarities here, which would uh, lend this, us to thinking that the formulas are gonna be pretty similar. Uh, here I've got a prism and a pyramid that have the exact same base shape. Okay, the bases are both squares. And if you look at them side by side, they are uh, the same height as well. So uh, everything else being equal, the, the area of the base and the height being equal, you can definitely tell though that the, the pyramid is gonna have smaller volume than the prism, as, as this could quite simply, it could fit inside of the prism. So the question is how much smaller is it? Well, here is the formula for the volume of this pyramid. It's gonna be one third the base area times the height. When we did prism yesterday, it was simply base area times height. When you change from prism to pyramid, it's just gonna be one third of the value that we were getting uh, with prisms. Uh, again, like we saw with the prisms, the, the B, which stands for the area of the base, um, does depend on the shape of the base. So the shape of the base can be uh, square, rectangle, triangle, trapezoid, uh, all sorts of different uh, kinds of bases. And you'll use whatever formula you need based on the shape of that base. Okay, for the first example, let's just take a look at this square-based pyramid and look at how we find the volume of that. It's a very common three-dimensional solid shape. So let's just start right there. Volume formula is one-third times the area of the base times the height. All right, so if we piece this out kind of in parts, let's start with uh, the area of the base. So the base in this pyramid right here is shaped like a square or a rectangle. And we find the area of a square or a rectangle by doing its length times width or base times height. So for this particular square, that's going to be six times six or 36. The height of this pyramid is how tall the pyramid is from the top down to the base. And the height of this pyramid is eight. All right, so we have the two pieces that we need. Uh, our volume formula is going to be one third times 36 times eight. I'll go ahead and do this part first. One third of 36 is 12. And then I need to do 12 times eight, which is 96. The units to the answer, since the units are in inches, are going to be inches cubed. Okay, the second example is a, a showing us another pyramid. This one is a, a pentagonal pyramid. The shape of the base is in the shape of a pentagon. The volume formula is still one third times the base area times the height. Now, if you remember from a few videos ago in this series, when you're finding the area of a regular polygon, area formula is one half the apothem times the perimeter. And sometimes the work to do that well, it was very strenuous. It was, it was pretty rigorous uh, to do that depending on what you had uh, given to you at the start of the problem. Uh, this volume problem, however, uh, is actually much easier because we're not going to have to do this. Uh, we are given in the problem what the area of the base is. So, so we know already what's going to go there. We don't actually have to compute it. Okay, so, so that's nice. It saves us quite a bit of work. Uh, our volume then, if we plug in the numbers that we have, it's one third times the area of the base, 27 times the height, which is how tall the pyramid is, which is five, 
Uh, I'm again going to do this part first because 27 divided by 3 is, is easy mental math. So that's going to be 9 times 5. And 9 times 5 is 45 the centimeters. So we're going to have centimeters cubed. Okay, the final pyramid example that I have is just, it, it looks a little bit different. First off, the base is a rectangle, uh, but this pyramid, you can see it's kind of leaning a little bit. And I just wanted to do an example like this just to uh, reiterate that the fact that it's leaning like that doesn't change how we do it or the formula that we use. It's still gonna be exactly the same. So let's get started. I'm gonna kind of separately over here, let's work out the area of the base. So the base of this pyramid is a rectangle. And to find the area of this rectangle, we're gonna do its length times its width, which is four times one or four. So that's gonna be our value into the base area. Of course, the height is just simply how tall the pyramid is. This is the length I want, the height coming down, making perpendicular with the base. So six is our height. Plug everything in, the volume is one third times four times six. Mental math here, I'm gonna start with one third times six. Uh, I can do that order of that product any way I want, and that's an easy way to start. One third times six is two. Two times the four is eight. And then we'll just put some units on there. Units are feet, so we want feet cubed for volume. Okay, next let's look at volume of a cone. Uh, I had a misprint on my slide. Uh, I crossed that out, it had said pyramid, but we are certainly doing cones here. So the volume of a cone is, is just like we saw with cylinders in the previous video, and we're gonna do the exact same modification to this formula that we did with pyramids just a moment ago. We need the base area, and we need the height of the cone. The formula is going to be one third times the base area times the height. Now, if you remember what we did with cylinders, because the base shape of a cylinder and also for a cone is always gonna be a circle, we're gonna go ahead and rewrite and kind of remove the base area part of that and just simply put in the area formula for a circle, which is pi r squared and then keep that height right there. So this is the formula that we're gonna use for cones. And let's take a look at a couple of examples utilizing that formula. Okay, first example problem, just a, a standard looking cone here. Volume formula is one third pi times radius squared times height. We're gonna use right here, the radius is three. We're gonna use the height is, again, it's gonna be the straight perpendicular distance to the base. We're gonna use this four. Uh, the five is extra information. In this particular case, we're not gonna need it, but you can see like possibly had we not been given the height, we could certainly use that measurement with this one and do Pythagorean's theorem to get what we need. So it might be a case where, where you could use that, but it's not gonna be used up here in the formula. So let's plug in what we've got. The volume is one third pi radius squared. So I want three squared times height, which is four. That's one third times pi, three squared is nine times four. So volume is going to be, let's see, nine times four. I'm gonna do this kind of all out loud with you. Nine times four is 36 and then one third of 36, or 36 divided by three is 12. So the volume is 12 pi, units are centimeters, we want centimeters cubed. Okay, we've seen this plenty of times where we leave our answer in terms of pi to have an exact answer. If we want an approximate answer, let's just go to the calculator and type in 12 times pi, and I get 37.7. Still would be centimeters cubed. Okay, so there's our approximate value 
of the volume. All right, the final example problem of this video is a composite shape. We see two three-dimensional solids put together, kind of like this. We've got a, a cylinder on the base and then a cone that's on top of that cylinder. And if you put them together, that's kind of like the shape that we are looking at right here. So in order to find the volume of the, the combined volume of, of this composite figure, we are going to have to find the volume of the cylinder and add to that the volume of the cone. So our volume formulas for a cylinder, we want pi radius squared times height. And for the cone, we want one third pi radius squared times the height. Now it's important not to get confused on these radius and heights because they could be different for the different shapes. It just so happens that the radius that we see right here is the same radius of the cylinder as it is for the cone. So for both of these, the radius is going to be two. Where it's different though is the height. Uh, right here I've got the height of the cylinder and that height is five. Whereas when I look at the cone, the height of this cone happens to be four. So we have to make sure we put the correct numbers into the correct spots, the correct variables, um, and just pay close attention. We have pi times two squared times five plus one third pi times two squared times four. So here we've got pi times four times five plus one third pi times four times four. So we're gonna have 20 pi plus, and then four and four is 16, which doesn't divide by three. So we're just gonna have 16 thirds pi. Now I do need to put these together into a single uh, value, a single, single term. So let me do that kind of scratch work over here. Uh, 20 over one is the same as 60 over three. That's my equivalent fraction. And if I add 16 over three to 60 over three, uh, then we would get 76 thirds pi. Uh, we need to put units on that. So our units are going to be inches cubed. Okay, and there's our total combined volume of the cylinder and the cone. That is the answer in exact form. I'll leave it to you if you wanna convert that to a decimal. We've done that plenty, so if you need to do that, you should know how to do that by now if you've been following this video series so far. Uh, so that concludes this video on finding volumes of pyramids and cones. If you have any questions or want to leave a comment, please do so below. If you found the video helpful, give this a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.